Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in today's video I'll show you how you can create a table variable inside the Copilot Studio. And as an added bonus, I'll show you how you can display the table in a fancy way using a for each inside the open code editor. So stick around, there's so much awesome things to learn over here. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now, in my Copilot for Studio, I've gone ahead and created this one Copilot and I call it Copilot for Table. I'll come to my topics and over here, I'll create a brand new topic. This is the one from blank. So I'll select that and I'm gonna call this one as tables var. Um, and then just to make sure that I'm actually selecting only this topic, uh, in my edit, I'm gonna go and actually add two phrases. Now, since this is a demo, I'm gonna put in some simple things such as var and table, but you always know that for production one, you actually wanna have larger phrases in your trigger uh, with natural language, all right? Just thought I'd let you know that. Okay, so we went and created this. Now the first question is that when you wanna go and add a variable, how do you do that? Well, the variable piece is pretty simple. I go and click on add a new node in the variable management, I go and select the set a variable value. That's the easy part, all right? I can come over here, I can set a variable. If I'm gonna go and select a variable, I can actually go and create a new one. In the new one, it already gives a name, then I can put the value. But the tricky part is how do I go in and add a variable of type table? Table means it's gonna have some columns and it's gonna have some rows. Well, how do I go and do that? That is what I wanna show you because it gets a little bit trickier, but if you walk through these steps I'm gonna show you, it actually does get a little simple. Now, interesting thing I'm gonna show you is how you can actually go and add all the content up front, right at one of the second nodes over there so that in the other nodes, you can actually go and call the value of the variable. So that's an interesting thing. So here we go. First of all, that variable name, I'm gonna go and change that from var1 to var table, all right? And the moment I do that, just because I typed in var table, doesn't mean it automatically knows that. There is some more stuff we have to do. So I click on that part, and then in the formula, this is where we go ahead and add some stuff. So the formula basically is very important from the syntax, and this is how it is. You first go and open up a square bracket, and then go down, and then you go and close it. That's one thing. And then after that, you go ahead and add these curly brackets. You see these curly brackets? You go ahead and do that as well. And the moment I just added these things, see, it automatically recognizes that this is of a type table. So now that you understand this, let me go and actually put some stuff over here and we can walk you through how to use it. And before I actually paste it, let me show you what it looks like in my notepad. So in my notepad, this is one example, all right? It's got the open brackets over here and it's got the closed brackets. But inside, I wanna actually go and create a few columns. Column number one is gonna be of type ID. I'm gonna call it as one, two, three. Next is the name. In my case, it's all about the different members of the Power Platform family. The first name is gonna be Power Apps, and then I'm gonna put a description. The description for Power Apps is low code service to build desktop and mobile apps. Now keep in mind the syntax. Now for the column names, the first column name is ID. It's a numerical value, so I just put that as one. The second column name is name. For that, the text, I'm actually gonna put it inside double quotes. Same thing for description. It is of a type text, so I'm gonna put that inside double quotes. And for each of them, after the name for the column, and for each of the column name, after the name, you have to put in a colon, which is the dot dot. And when you're always jumping from one column to the other one, there is the comma. So it's making sense how you're doing this? Good. So let me go and add a few more rows. So for every row, when you come to the end over here, you gotta click a comma. I'm holding my shift button down, clicking enter, and I'm gonna go and paste the other ones. So as you can see, these are all exactly the same as far as syntax goes. All I've done is actually change the content. So for the second row, I've got ID two, I've got name, and this is gonna be for Power Automate. Remember, they are inside the double quotes, comma, description, colon, and then the text is inside double quotes. Since I have another one, I gotta end the curly brackets with another comma. Same thing for the power pages, it's the ID number three, same thing for the fabric, ID four, and the last one is Copilot Studio, ID five. And now the last one, I don't need to put in a comma, why? Because that's the last one. So I think I've got the syntax correct over here. I'm gonna go and select the entire thing, I'll do a control C, 
Now let's go back over here, all right? In my value section, I'm gonna to come to my formula and I gotta go and type that thing all over again. So I'm gonna go and put in my quotes. So I'm gonna go and put in my square brackets and then I'll do enter and I'll go to the square brackets and inside that, I'll go and put this in. And since the syntax is correct, the output is got the green check and the type is off table. Now, one thing that you might miss over here, which I wanna make sure is that you gotta go down here, scroll down and click on that insert button. You see that insert button was a little hidden, so you might forget to do it. Just make sure that you go and scroll down or you can also go and click on this expand and it gives you this nice output as well, all right? So just do one of them, but make sure, make sure, make sure you click on this insert button. And the moment you do that, this is what you get. And if you highlight over it, basically just take your mouse over it, you actually see all this text, all this stuff coming in. So this looks pretty good, all right? So I'm actually gonna go ahead and save my copilot just to make sure I don't lose anything. And since the topic is saved, just for grins and giggles, let's go and add a message. And in our message, let's go and see what this thing looks like. So now when I add a message and I click on these insert variable, I see the variable that we added. And see, even over here, it says it is of a topic type table. So I'll click on it and over here, I'll go and now trigger this conversation. The two phrases I have is var and table. So I'll just go and type in var and I'll click on enter. So now that you see it, it has triggered specifically this topic and it gave me my entire table. Granted, the syntax is a little clunky, a little messy, but the important thing is that the data all shows up over here. Now there's a little bit of tricks we can do this. For example, if you like this syntax over here, but there's just too much information. There is this ID, there's this description, there's this name. You don't want all of that. You just want name. Well, I can show you how to do that. Let me go down here, put in another send a message and go to the power effects section. And over here, type in show columns. This is a power effects formula. Click on the show columns, open up a curly bracket and start typing in topic, put a period, it already shows you what your variable is. So just basically click on enter. After that, go and click on comma. Now here it gets a little tricky because it's telling you you need the column name. It just doesn't tell you what your options are. So you need to know that ahead of time. But since one of our tests is right here, I know that the column I'm looking for is name. So I'm just gonna go and type in name and then I'll go and close it. And because I closed it correctly, it is saying that everything is good. That green check is always good. I'll go and click on insert. And then let's do another test. I'll go and type in that var again. We should see both with all the columns such as description, ID and name, but below it, below it is where we only see the name part of it. So now you understand that how we were able to create the table, display all of it, and also just show one column. But I know what some of you are thinking. It says, Daniel, it's all good that you're actually able to show the data, but can we display it a little nicer? Ah, we can actually do that as well. And for that, we're gonna use a combination of four each and we're gonna click on this ellipsis in the more and use this open code editor. This combination will actually display it much nicer. So first, let's go and save it just to make sure we don't lose any information. Good, the topic has been saved. And now let's go and click on this more and look at this open code editor. This open code editor actually came from the power virtual agent days. It was actually a combination of when low code and dev codes were allowed to be merged together and the open code editor was provided as a nice functionality. And this is where we can actually go and tweak things and we can make changes on the fly. In fact, you can do a control A, copy the whole thing, do a control C and paste it into another topic and it will replicate automatically. It's a really neat way to go and make these changes and tweak things faster. But in our case, what we wanna go and do is now apply that for each. Because one of the things about this for each is it's not readily available. You literally cannot find that from the user interface side. This for now is the only way you can go and add it. And here is the code snippet. Now it's very important that you add this correctly. So I'm already on line 29 at the end. I'm gonna click on enter. I'll click on enter again so I go all the way to the bottom. And I'm gonna paste this. So right now you see this as an error. Why? Because again, the code needs to be added in a correct way. And it's as simple. I basically go all the way to this 31 right here and then I go and move it all to the left. The moment I do that, the error goes away because all of these need to be one below the other. Now Daniel, when you keep saying all of these, like what is these? So let me give you a little overview of what this code is and I'm actually gonna build a whole separate video emphasizing on this. Now, in our case, first let's just go and click on save. Let's go and take a look at it over here. 
So first of all, it worked. The for each came, and then the for each is basically going and displaying a message for what? For each and every one of these items that we have, which is Power Apps, Power Automate, all of them. It's doing for each of them, it's going and displaying it in a little nicer in a string fashion. But let's go back to the code in the back end, all right? I'm gonna to go to the code editor, and you will see that for each and every one of these things, which was basically setting, creating the variable, displaying it as the full table, or just going in table names, all of these are of type actions. And for each of them, it's of a kind. Like the first kind was setting the variable. The second kind was actually displaying the data, which is sending the data of all the tables. Then the second one was also setting the table. This, the second one was also sending the message, but only of the names. So you see this kind and this kind, that's what it is. It's like, what kind of message are you doing? So we actually went and added the third one, which was the for each. And inside the for each, we went and called all the items. Our items was this topic var table that we just created. See right over here, this was the action to actually set the variable. The set the variable name was topic dot var table. That's the one that we created. Uh, but for them, we have to actually go and get each and every value of that table. And for that, this is this new item that we've added, which is the value topic dot current item. This itself topic dot current item is actually not a variable. What it is doing is that yes, you're saying what it is doing is that it's taking each and every one of the items in that table variable we created and each and every rows are put in as a current item, current item of that for each loop that we are creating. And then below it is basically another send activity. The send activity is just displaying that information and we're displaying it in this certain fashion. So if I go back now to the close editor, you kind of get an idea of what this is. And again, to get this for each, you cannot currently get it through this UI interface. There is no option for me to get this for each node through the UI interface. Um, so also keep in mind that support for this is not official. So if you went and used this and for whatever reason you started to get some problems, technically you cannot submit a Microsoft ticket because the for each is not officially available at least on the UI interface. Uh, but you're welcome to test it and play with it. But but here's the key thing, is like, how did this make a difference? And for that, let's actually go ahead and trigger this one. So that trigger phrases which I went and put was var. Now I'll go and click on that enter. And now you'll actually see the difference. So you can actually see how this has grown. First, we got all the data. That all data is coming in from this message over here. See that message is displaying it over here. All of the data in the table. The second message went ahead and only showed one specific column, which was of the type name. Now we wanted to take it one step further, is I wanted to show the name and the description, but in a nicer way. And if you notice, they're coming in as separate cards over here. Because in this one, this is all just one card. In the second one also, it is all just one card. But in the four each, they're coming in as multiple cards, all of them as five. So this is just a nicer way to go ahead and display this data using that table variable that you and I just created. Hopefully in the future, we'll be able to add this for each item node using the UI interface. But for now, you've got to go into the open code editor and add this little snippet. I've also gone and taken that snippet and put it in the description below. You will have to tweak it based on how you've actually given the name for that table variable. Hopefully this video was useful to you. And as always, keep using Copilot Studio. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.